The film which you are about to see is an account of the tragedy which befell a group of teenagers in the frozen Arctic. Originally from the UK, in July of 2011, the British School Exploring Society belonging to Eden College near London decided to go on an adventure of a lifetime in the Arctic. Their destination, you ask? Why, the remote and frozen Svalbard archipelago halfway between the North Pole and Norway. The series of northern islands is home to a population of about 2,600 people who live side by side to a truly nightmarish beast. The 100% carnivorous polar bear. And with a population of just over 3,000, the human and bear populations truly do live side by side. Which now brings us back to our story. On July 23rd, 2011, a group of 80 students and chaperones belonging to the Exploring Society were planning a month-long trip and being able to explore the entire archipelago. The first half of the trip was going quite well as they were able to get quite a bit of sightseeing in and really, really enjoying themselves quite a bit. Halfway through the trip though, on August 4th, 11 of the students and two of the chaperones would hike to the Vaughn Post Glacier, which is located right here. The group would then decide to camp overnight on a snow bridge that was located near the glacier. Though unknown to our explorers, this bridge was known by the locals to have frequent polar bear sightings. And so on August 5th, in the early morning hours when it was still dark outside around 7.30, a massive and starving polar bear started to make its way towards the camp. The group made sure to set multiple trip wires around the campsite just in case this would happen. But not a single one went off as the beast approached. And on top of that, unfortunately, there was a very dense fog that was rolling in, making it even harder to see as the bear was approaching. Though they wouldn't have seen him anyway as they didn't assign a night watchman because of the heavy fog. Unfortunately, it would also be around this time that one of the students by the name of Horatio Chapel would peek his head outside of his tent, as he was most likely getting up to use the bathroom. When he was suddenly attacked by the bear, he was surprised and was immediately tackled to the ground, where unfortunately the bear began to maul him, chewing on his face and neck, sadly killing him instantly. The beast then went for two other classmates that were in the same tent as Horatio, also injuring both their necks and faces as well. One of the students by the name of Patrick Flinders remembers the night in detail. He remembers sleeping in his tent when suddenly he heard a very loud scratching sound coming from outside. Then suddenly he remembered the entire tent falling over. And as soon as the tent had hit Patrick's face, he had looked up and immediately saw the polar bear's mouth chomping at him with intense ferocity. And the bear still had blood on his face from his friend. And upon seeing this living nightmare, he thought he would surely die a horrible death. The bear then followed up by hitting Patrick in the face with his paw and gruesomely clamping down his jaws on Patrick's elbow crushing multiple bones in the process. Then without warning, the bear grabbed Patrick's head and he horrifyingly started hearing his own skull being crushed in the bear's powerful jaws. I could hear a crack and then I heard the most deafening growl as I was so close up. Patrick then gathered as much strength as he could muster and was able to hit the bear square in the face, which fortunately made the bear release its grip. So horribly, he went straight for the other classmate that was in the tent with them, a boy by the name of Scott Bindle Smith. Patrick would then be left with multiple fragments of the bear's teeth still stuck in his head and would later need at least 20 stitches in order to correct it. And as the bear started mauling and chasing Scott, the terrifying screams would finally wake up one of the chaperones, a man by the name of Michael Reed. And he also happened to be the only person on campgrounds with a rifle. He rushed from his tent and made sure to take careful aim at the rampaging monster, and especially as to not hit any of the other classmates. But unfortunately, the rifle would misfire he would then try to chamber another round, only for that round to misfire as well. He would then try this two more times, all with misfires at the end. Though in the heat of the moment, he didn't realize that his safety was still engaged the entire time. While he was struggling with the rifle, he then shouted to the other chaperone, a man by the name of Andrew Rock, to fire at least his pin flares at the bear to scare him away. Unfortunately though, he didn't get it off fast enough and the bear then turned back to Michael and charged him and knocking him off his feet. As the bear then went straight for his head as well. He would then try to gouge the bear's eyes out, but unsuccessfully. Then luckily the other group leader, Andrew, began throwing rocks at him, which made the bear drop Michael, but as soon as he did, the bear would then charge Andrew, mauling him just as badly. Though because of this opening that Andrew gave to Michael, Michael was then able to fix his weapon and shoot the bear until it finally died. Team leaders Michael and Andrew and students Patrick Flinders and Scott Bendle Smith were all horribly mauled that night, but miraculously, they all still lived. Unfortunately though, as stated before, 17-year-old Horatio Chapel didn't make it. Just like the others, he was attending Eden College and was even on his way to becoming a doctor. But sadly and unfortunately, 
on this night, fate had other plans. May he now rest in peace. Let me know in the comments what would you have done in this situation with a massive polar bear eating you alive. And do you think that the group leader should have had more training? And as always, thanks for watching. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons and turn on the notification bells for more content in the future. Goodbye for now.